hello uh of course uh good morning to everyone uh first of all i would like to thank uh guest brothers for uh giving me the opportunity uh to have this talk uh with the pscrs uh convention and of course i would like to thank pscrs for uh also uh inviting me so the topic that was uh given to me is about the challenges that we have uh uh, overcome during this pandemic. So uh, I have some disclaimers, uh, namely one is uh, the, the contents uh, presented uh, in these slides are the opinions of the speaker uh, for me only and not necessarily to reflect the opinion of any industry or any company. And uh, my slides contents are for scientific discussions only and are not uh, recommended for off-label recommendations. So some of them are, of course, uh, evidence-based practice uh, trends. And uh, they might be also useful on other practitioners as well. So it's good to share those. And if there are products mentioned on my slides, it is for the purpose of the topic discussion. So my objectives include, of course, to discuss the different challenges experienced uh, in providing ostomy care. Uh, during this time of the pandemic. And of course, to discuss the different phases in uh, ostomy care uh, that we have done uh, before the pandemic and what is the difference that has happened and the changes that uh, we have uh, uh, done in our protocol when the pandemic came. And of course, to share the present situation in our facility and what to expect uh, in the future in terms of ostomy care. So uh, we all know that now uh, we are experiencing and we are still uh, in the pandemic. And it was around uh, December 2019 when we first heard of it in the news. No? So uh, initially our response was uh, parang hindi naman siya darating dito sa Pilipinas, uh, it was in China. So everything is uh, going fine naman uh, in our country, in our situation, in our practice. Till again uh, came February um, 2020 and that's the time that we had our first uh, case of uh, COVID-19 here at the medical city and that's where all of the um, uh, problems started because it's new, uh, no one has been in the pandemic before so uh, it's really difficult uh, situation for everyone especially how are we going to handle the patients? Uh, how are we going to segregate uh, COVID patients to non-COVID patients? How are we going to identify patients that with COVID or with suspect of COVID? So it's really difficult. And uh, the same time, uh, because of the lockdown, the quarantine, so there have been also difficulties when it comes to the transportation. So definitely uh, the census declined. Uh, especially for our outpatient visits, outpatient clinics. Uh, the census uh, rise when it comes to the uh, patients with COVID-19. So the ICU uh, has been full, even regular wards has been full with uh, COVID patients. And um, eventually, uh, before, uh, we conduct programs for patients who has ostomy. And this also involves our patients and of course our other healthcare provider. So we provide day forums, training programs. This was before. And uh, we can easily connect and bond with our patients and to their families, which is we think the most effective way in taking care of patients with uh, ostomy. Because we know that uh, the, the changing, uh, for me huh, and also in our practice here, uh, for us, the changing of the bags is just, of course, secondary. We The primary uh, attention that we give is the psychological aspect. And of course, the proper teaching to the patient and the family. Because the success when it comes to treating uh, ostomy patients comes when they tend to be more independent in taking care of themselves. Now, we have support groups, and these support groups, of course, we know uh, in the Philippines, uh, we have the international, uh, the Colostomy Friends, Ostomy Philippines, which I think uh, Mr. Rolando Lora is very uh, active. He is uh, based in, in KTI, they have an office there. And then in the Philippine General Hospital, it's the Ostomy Association of the Philippines, which I think was the first 
uh, ostomy support group, which was founded, of course, by the ETNAP or the Enterostomal Therapy Nurses Association of the Philippines, which was founded by our dear Nelda Escueta. Uh, presently, uh, again, uh, because of the pandemic, these support groups have been having difficulty in conducting their programs. No? Uh, of course, we know that they are really at high risk and very vulnerable when it comes to uh, having this uh, uh, in this pandemic. Now, um, before, uh, patient interaction is also was never a problem also. and uh, we can take care of our patients when it comes to the primary primary goal which is uh, patient counseling and um, we do have counseling and health education modules that we provide to our patients so basically if your patient is an adult patient from teen to pediatric patients we have a customized counseling methods and healthcare modules provided for them. So um, it's really very easy that time uh, before the pandemic. And it's very convenient as well as to our patient and also to our healthcare provider. There are not much barrier uh, during that time. And of course, um, uh, we can easily schedule them. We can accept uh, walk-in schedules for our patients and also to our relatives uh, when it comes to hospital care. Now, imagine before that um, getting or giving communication and health education to our patients. It's very easy without, of course, the PPEs that we wear. But presently and uh, during the pandemic, we wear a lot of PPEs wherein it's really difficult to communicate. No? Even our facial expression, even our uh, voice, the, the volume of the voice and the method of communication is really difficult for them. So it's very and easy uh, both for the patients and the relatives and of course the time uh, consumed on giving this uh, uh, counseling and education. So here are some of the uh, challenges that we have um, experienced uh, during the pandemic and of course number one is uh, doing pre-operative procedures to a patient with COVID or even to a patient who are suspected to have COVID. No? So uh, one is you provide uh, the ostomy siting or planning. So before we do it regularly, it must be done prior to patient's operation. No? One day or two days before the operation, we should stomas, do stoma siting. And the problem is if the patient is admitted in a COVID ward or in a COVID um, unit. So the care is a little bit more tedious. And at the same time, we need extra support and we need extra time on preparing that. Uh, there is also a challenge on uh, elective surgeries that time. So we cannot, uh, uh, we all know that the surgeries have been stopped on a certain period, especially during the lockdown, elective surgeries in particular. So in cases of um, problems and complications of our patients who have stomas, uh, there have been also difficulties. A uh, challenge on how to conduct assessment and treatment to patients with COVID is also difficult uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we cannot just go to a COVID area to assess and treat a patients with uh, pressure injury or, of course, patients who has a colostomy. And uh, it took a while uh, and some uh, we managed to coordinate and collaborate with the other departments on how are we going to, to uh, continue our treatment. And later on, I will discuss that on my uh, next slide. Number three is, of course, the shortage in supplies and other equipments needed for care. It's it's one of the main, main problems that we have. Uh, one is the logistics. Number two is the delivery. Uh, number And then the next thing is, of course, there is no really a um, uh, supplies delivered. Uh, it's really hard to to get supplies uh, during the pandemic uh, because of the lockdown, so because of the transportation at the same time. So um, because of the supplies scarcity, most of the time we tend to uh, get uh, improvised appliance. Uh, we tend to uh, do things that might help in extending the adhesiveness of the supply of the appliance and the, and the uh, ostomy products so that we can um, 
uh, provided provide care to our patients. Uh, number four is the shortage in manpower. Although in our department, uh, we don't have any problems with regards to manpower because we have a dedicated ostomy and nurse. But in other areas, no, and, and, and we are blessed because uh, no one got infected on our department. Unlike in other departments, especially during the first few months of the pandemic, uh, we got a lot of healthcare providers and healthcare workers who are infected with the virus. So basically, they are quarantined and some nurses have been reassigned or redeployed to that department who needs extra manpower. And uh, five, uh, of course, face-to-face -face consultation is no longer applicable uh, during the, the time of the lockdown. And until now, uh, we are limiting face-to-face -face interaction. So it's very difficult for other patients who tend to, to, to prefer face-to-face -face, uh, interaction and counseling. Number six, again, is, of course, the transportation. So patients cannot come to the hospital that time. So before the pandemic, this is our basic patient workflow. So patient scheduled for stoma surgery. Uh, if the patient is scheduled, they need to consult a colorectal surgeon or a general surgeon or uh, the surgeon who, who has ordered for the ostomy creation. And then prior to surgery, they are referred to our center for counseling and uh, preoperative counseling. And of course, we do stoma marking or planning or some others call it the stoma cycling. It is very essential. And then after that, of course, the surgery and then post-operative care is given to the patient and we do discharge planning. And if probable, we also provide home care. That was before. Now, presently, the challenge is, of course, you have to do these this long lines and uh, procedures to, of course, avoid uh, the, the infection, uh, the spread of infection. So basically, if strictly appointment is provided and then um, if there's a need for for a face-to-face -face, uh, consultation, uh, it's strictly by appointment and must undergo certain screening procedures. So uh, you can see here that in our lobby, there is a um, uh, assessment uh, area, and then they are provided with ID bracelets. If you are asymptomatic, you do not have any symptoms of COVID, uh, you are given a green bracelet. So if you have a green bracelet, definitely you will go to the green area, which is clean. Green is clean. And the yellow area, you can see there on the slides that there are uh, yellow dots on the floors. That's where the COVID area is. So that's where COVID patients are assisted to. So that's where they go. So we have uh, basically developed a two-in-one hospital uh, to separate the patients who, have, who are suspected of COVID and for those patients who want to have consult for COVID. And we have, of course, for our regular patients, we, which we had a problem on taking care of kasi uh, simula nung nagka-COVID yung mga regular patients that want to get consults or regular consults or other disease not related to COVID cannot go to the hospital or they are afraid to go to the hospital. So we were able to provide them with a two-in-one hospital where in the clean cases would go to the green area. Now, we also assure patients when it comes to, any, to safety and distancing, uh, we provided, of course, uh, uh, and, uh, infect uh, uh, doormats, which provides uh, anti uh, in spreading the infection, uh, uh, prevents spread of infection. Um, we also have provided um, screening tools for them. And now, uh, presently, we have, of course, the the QR codes no, for the passing pass, uh, healthcare declaration checklist. And there are temperature, of course, we all, I think everybody's doing this now. They have temperature monitoring tools as well. Now, for patients who don't want to go to the hospital uh, and, and proceed with these long lines, we provided a, an application. So they just have to download the PNC app. Uh, and every department, like here uh, in, our, in my slide, it shows there a QR code of the stoma and complex wound care clinic we're in. They can just scan the QR code go or go into the app and have a schedule on our center so that when they go here, uh, that's their schedule visit. So there's no more long line. So at the same time, on the assessment areas, uh, they can just present the QR codes that they have already filled up the health declaration checklist. And they just have to get the temperature monitoring. We 
with these QR codes also and with the app, we can also provide the digital um, online telemedicine. So we can have this telemedicine provided uh, to our patients who doesn't want to go to the hospital. So um, consult first to telemedicine. Uh, they can choose uh, whatever services that they want. They can also pay prepaid or online payment, and then we will provide the consultation on the schedule that they have chosen. So, um, of course, counseling for our ostomy patients is very important because uh, there is a law, uh, International Ostomy Association, there's a charter of rights wherein all ostomies, patients who will undergo ostomy uh, creation, uh, must be provided with AP operative counseling. It is their right. And we have data that shows that by giving preoperative counseling to patients who will undergo stoma surgery, it lessens the anxiety, it lessens the depression. At the same time, we provide a good result of taking care of the patient and not only of the patient, but also their family, being support group. Because most of the time, if they are not aware of the situation that they're going to face, no, uh, the, the friction between the family and the patient is, is very common. Uh, Minsan yung kamag-anak pa yung nandidiri agad doon sa, sa pasyente nila. And uh, we should, uh, I think the main problem there is yung education because they are not aware of what's going to happen. Some patients who, have, who will undergo stoma surgery thinks that their stoma will just stay for a week, for just uh, a month. So the depression came when they, they, they learned uh, that their stoma will stay for them forever. And it's because they are not aware of things. So counseling is very important. And I guess uh, the PSCRS and most of the colorectal surgeons are, are uh, promoting this, this practice now, na yung counseling natin for our patients. And patients who are living with a colostomy, uh, basically, we should consider, when, when counseling, we should consider these important things. Yung work nila, social life, clothing, they, can they take shower or they can bathe? exercise and sports, travel, and even marital sexual activity, which is very common and important for a regular people. And we should treat them as a regular person pa rin, even if they have a stoma. Nothing is wrong with them. And it is not the end of the world when you have a stoma. It's a beginning of a new chapter of their life. The stoma is there to help them and to aid them in their present disease or sickness and not to give them additional burden. And we should always focus, no? it is very important na lagi namin sinasabi, we should always focus on the quality of life of the patient who will have a stoma. So, phases in ostomy care, of course, it's important that we have preoperative counseling, postoperative count, uh, post care, continuity of care. No? So, preoperative uh, phase includes, of course, yung ostomy marking or yung stoma sighting, preoperative counseling, care planning, discharge planning, and when it comes to postoperative, that's where you teach, of course, yung pouching techniques, proud, uh, product orientation, ostomy care uh, with the family and relatives, and of course, how to manage complications, how to identify complications. And if necessary, if we have evaluated the patient prior to discharge that they need continuity of care, we can offer, of course, to outpatient visits to our center or we can provide it for them at their home. So meron tayo continuity of care or we have home care. So continuity of care, of course, includes uh, patient and family counseling and re-evaluation of patient independency, access to care, where they can go. If they travel, do, does it have a uh, nearby ostomy center? That's what we tell them. No, Do they have enough supplies? Where to get supplies? No, And we always coordinate with our local agents and companies, uh, suppliers when it comes to this, so that patient can buy from them anywhere, where, wherever they are. And of course, uh, access to support groups like the OAT and ostomy friends. Now, what is the importance of ostomy planning or stoma sighting. Ostomy planning and ostomy sighting is, is a procedure wherein we identify the ideal site where the stoma will be placed. No? So uh, it prevents prolapse, retraction, and of course, it's much more easier for the patient to change their ostomy appliance. Uh, and um, 
normally uh, we give them 12 uh, one to two days before the surgery and we do not do ostomy marking on emergency procedures or emergency surgery because it takes time to do this no? around one hour or uh, one and a half and the patient has to make different positions wherein the ostomy nurse or the stoma nurse will identify the proper and ideal site, which is, of course, located on your uh, abdominal rectus muscles. Now, since face-to-face -face counseling is very difficult uh, during the pandemic, we have, uh, and before we do flip charts, no? uh, so now we have provided them with uh, tablets and gadgets where we can give it to them at their rooms, even if they are COVID patients, so we can have access digitally uh, we call it uh, electronic counseling no so we just give them the tablet and then the ostomy nurse or our nurses will provide them counseling and education through that tablet and they can have actual live interaction so the visit to them is limited but they can also have access all the time that they want and with again to the family uh, included now when it comes to the supply shortage uh, which was the previous challenge we tend to to have as much as many brands that we have that is available and tend to use them uh, wisely. So, hindi na kami masyadong uh, very choosy on the brand. Uh, even if whatever brands that we have and uh, whatever size that we have, which is available, that's we're going to use and we're going to apply. Kasi we, don't, we cannot afford the patient to suffer na wala pa tayong ma-provide na appliance sa kanila. Second, patient also has a problem in securing their own supplies because most of the offices are closed. So, um, and they cannot go to the hospitals and even purchase. Sometimes yung purchase online, no? hindi possible. So, we have to also deal with this problem. So, later we will show you how or how we have overcome this. Um, another one is shortage of PPE. So um, during the pandemic, in the even now, I think there has been some shortages, especially in the gloves. No, ang uh, hirap kumuha ng mga clean gloves ngayon uh, and uh, uh, sterile gloves. So when you go to a COVID area, you cannot just go there uh, and do um, to a one. The, the ward is like 32 bed space or more than 32 bed capacity for a COVID in a single ward, and then we'll just go there for assessment. I think it's not very practical, and uh, it's just going to be a waste for the PPE, and we know naman that there is a shortage. So what we do is we normally uh, uh, schedule the visits to a COVID area. So may certain time and day kami na bibisit sa COVID area, and siya lang yung bibisitahin, kasi we don't want to, of course, cross-contaminate the clean uh, areas, no? And at the same time, the nurses who are assigned to the COVID areas, we train them also. So, tinuturuan na namin sila so that they can, because they are already there, they have the PPEs there with them. So, uh, might as well teach them on how to do basic ostomy care so that there's, if there's an emergency or, or there's really a need for them to take care of the patient, they are the one who's going to take care. So, parang back up kami. We will just go there on a regular specific day of the visit. And this is also um, uh, we. This is also one of the included uh, changes that we have done in our protocol. So um, another problem because of the shortage, because patients can't go to the hospital or they are afraid to go to the hospital, we tend to see that there is there have been an increase in the number of complications when it comes to stoma complications, yung mga skin irritations, dumami, kasi nga walang supply, pinatatagal lang supply, even if there's a leakage, they don't change it. So we tend to see the problem there. And we uh, we see a lot of, when the lockdown was over, patients come in, then nakita namin, eto na, dumami yung pasyente yung nagpapa-counseling sa amin or nagpapatreat na sa amin na um, may mga complications. Strategies, um, one, make sure that you have many options as possible like brands, other brands available, just keep them. And once the brands that, that you think is very reliable, then that's, you get it back or uh, make, make more supplies. So that's what we, we have done is when we see that the supplies have become regular or made, nag-open ulit no? after the lockdown, nag-order na kami ng, that can support us for a month or two. And then, but we also still have 
back up of other supplies as well na ibang brands natin. And also we want to to anticipate that not all patients are are comfortable and compatible to the brands that we want. So we as much as possible we have many options, other options uh, for them. Make sure to use stoma accessories that may help to prolong the adhesiveness of your colostomy bags like of course your ICP, hydrocolloids and barriers. Um, you can also have them use stoma belts but with extra precautions. Before, we are not really fond of using accessories kasi inisip natin mahal. No? Mahal. Accessories, magdadagdag pa ako ng accessory, ng ostomy piece and everything. Mahal yan, dagdag sa bayad. We're in, nakakatulong po ito talaga sa kanila. Bakit? Kasi yung ostomy piece po na ginagamit natin ngayon, instead na lagi silang palit ng palit ng bag dahil palagi pong nagdilip, the piece prevents it from happening. At the same time, it ha it adds adhesiveness doon sa wafers natin or base plate. So, mas tumatagal. So, yung dati na every three days lang yung pagpapalit natin, every seven days, pinapalitan po yan, napapalitan. Mas tumatagal po siya. Um, sometimes, you have to use your imagination and creativity because some things may come in handy in times of need or during the pandemic. Uh, actually, there's a silver lining in this pandemic. We tend to see things that are not possible during the norms, no? And we tend to do impossible things possible. And that's the one thing that we uh, have experienced. Yung mga dati na hindi pwedeng nakikita namin, na we can we, we squeeze it out. No? Nakikita namin na, oh, ba't kaya naman pala ng uh, dalawang tao lang dati? Ngayon, dati ang dami, lima yung gumagawa. Pero ngayon, dalawa nakakaya. And at the same time, we have also noticed that uh, in our center, during the pandemic, we did not close. Uh, in the Ostomy Wound Center, uh, it is also uh, based on our data and our annual report that we have gained more patients compared to the pandemic, uh, the normal. So, nung nag-pandemic, hindi kami nag-close. Mas madami yung pasyente pumunta sa amin. And we tend to also serve patients from other hospitals na dito sa amin pumupunta because they said, close yung centers na pinupuntahan nila dati or wala silang doctors na mapuntahan. So um, we have received a lot of uh, walk-in patients during the time and even patients from other institutions as well. So everyone is welcome uh, during the time of pandemic. And I think kahit every time we, we must help each other and set aside our differences. So um, next, when you change appliances, there are challenges uh, when it comes to transportation in hospital visits. It is wise to use appliances that can hold much more longer than the usual. So kung yung dati, for example, mga dressings na ginagamit natin, saglit lang, gumamit ka ng high absorbent dressing, so mas matagal. So hindi nila kailangan palagi pumalik uh, frequently dun sa hospital. Uh, health education on how to reinforce or change dressing at home is very important. Turuan natin yung kamag-anak nila kuha natin yung relative nila para pag uwi nila, they know how to change, they know how to dress. And uh, this saves them time on going to the hospital kasi na we want them to lessen the visits to the hospital. And of course, to increase their level of independency in taking care of themselves and also to their patients and relatives. Use appliances that are widely available and patients can have easily access to them. Uh, problem that we encountered, if you prescribe a, uh, an appliance that is not available uh, within the local markets, hindi nila na mabibili. Nahirapan na sila sa care. Ititigil nila yung pag-alaga sa sarili nila dahil wala silang mabili ng pinirescribe. Wherein if you tell them, all ostomy bags, pag wala po kayong mabili ma, meron tong available sa ganitong lugar. Doon po kayo pumunta. So, mahisi paste, just as uh, like said earlier, no? sometimes we we don't really uh, know how to handle them properly. Kasi akala natin paste lang yan, parang ilalagay, pandikit. And then later on, may gloves tayo. It becomes so messy and, uh, and troublesome. Uh, na pagdating, uh, eh, ang messy niyan, hindi ko na siya gagamitin. Wherein, if you just know how to use them properly, it's a very useful uh, appliance. And we always include them on our ostomy kit. Palagi kami may stoma paste, palagi kami may powder. Because it helps prevent... Uh, on having complications. Prevention is better than having a complication. Always remember that if you have a irritated skin or peristomal skin and then it becomes a weeping irritation or dermatitis, you will have a problem of sticking the colostomy bag there. And the principle is kailangan lagi may colostomy bag. Kasi pag walang colostomy bag, hindi mo siya open, lumalabas yung effluent or yung dumi. Ang pinatawag namin, we call that effluent. 
tumatama sa peristomal skin area. Yun yung nagkakaroon, nagiging cause ng irritation sa pasyente natin. So, as much as possible, prevent that from happening. So, ano natin siya, uh, iwasan natin. So, um, it is stoma friendly. Uh, basically, you have to wet your fingers na magkakam in contact with the face ng water. And don't worry, baka sabi nyo hindi didikit. No, it will dry. And then when it dries up, it will become very uh, helpful dun sa base plate natin. So, stoma in face is very useful also in filling the gaps and sa curved abdomen and also on your skin pore. Uh, one also a uh, uh, dressing and appliance that we are really fond of using and we always make sure that we have this is yung Duoderm Clean. It's very handy in minor skin irritation, uh, partial thickness loss of your uh, patient's skin and also in taking care of patients, uh, pediatric patients with stoma. We all know na mahirap maghanap ng uh, pediatric ostomy bags but we use them, we use Duoderm Clean and your regular common na uh, wee bag or urine collection bag for babies as a alternative. So um, this is one example that we have. This is an actual patient where in you can see that the baby's uh, skin or peristomal skin area is really uh, irritated, excoriated, uh, na, na burn siya nung effluent na lumalabas doon sa kanya. And you can see the white material there. They just put a zinc calamine uh, lotion, which is, at the same time, yes, it can treat no for uh, for the meantime. But then the problem is taking that off no yung material, mahihirapan. And then baby too, eh, very sensitive. Yung pain na ini natin, it's very painful for that patient. Number one, do not use saline solution in cleaning uh, stoma ostomies for babies. We just use uh, sterile water or just water with soap. It's enough. Wag na tayong Kasi yung saline solution, it's very painful. No? Mahapdi yan sa pasyente. Remove all this whitish material from the baby's abdomen or sa skin so that you can have a good adhesive doon sa inyong ilalagay na dressing. And then after that, we put powder. No? A lot of powder on that area. Powder is stoma-friendly. Don't be afraid if it comes in contact with your stoma. It is the one that was going to help your patient treat yung excoriated skin niya. No, siya yung mag magpapagaling doon sa irritated and excoriated skin ng pasyente. And then after that, for a certain period of time, remove the powder. Tanggalin mo yung excess powder kasi hindi dikit yung mga adhesive natin. So then you put your duoderm pin. And then after we have applied the duoderm pin on your patient's skin, we trap some powder there. It will help your patient heal yung irritations na in a certain period of time. And then we apply yung inyong improvised bag or any bag available, doon namin siya dikit sa duoderm. So every time na matanggal yung wee bag nyo, or yung ring bag nyo, mapuno na siya, or yung bag na nilagay nyo doon on top of the duoderm, siya lang yung tatanggalin nyo. But yung duoderm will be left there for a certain period of time to promote it. And this is the result after five days. So you can see the difference talaga. Gumaling yung irritate. Kitang-kita yung, yung uh, healed skin doon sa patient natin. na uh, After five days lang, no, ganun ka kabilis yung uh, paggaling niya in combination with your appliance. Another appliance that we think that is very handy during this pandemic is of course your moldable appliance. So Convatec has this moldable technology. They have this wafer that doesn't need to be cut. Uh, you just have to shape it uh, in accordance with the shape of the ileostomy or the colostomy. No more cutting, easy to apply. They can, patients who are very dependent on relatives and now increase their independence kasi kahit sila kaya nila itong ikabit. And it has a snug fit uh, conformable doon sa stoma niya. So bumabalik siya and then it makes a fertile neck secured uh, placement on your patient's stoma. But uh, always remember that you should use this for patients who has a protruding stoma para may kakapitan yung ating moldable technology. Okay? And um, uh, during this time of uh, when they when they travel or we don't, when they don't have someone with them at home, uh, naipit sila because of the quarantine. And before inaasa nila yung pagkupit sa relatives nila or their household, they can do this by themselves. Uh, easier and uh, much more faster. Another strategy that we have been developing and we have developed during this pandemic is of course the continuity of care. 
since most of the people are afraid to travel and go to the hospital, we are the ones who are extending our care to their home. So we provide continuative care, medical service, uh, um, uh, laboratory on wheels, wounds on wheels, and also any sorts of services that the hospital can do at home is we offer. We also can send the uh, consultants per request, uh, but these are scheduled visits as well. No? So we, we are the one who's going to reach out uh, and we have to adjust during this pandemic for our patients. Now, uh, I think this would be my last slides and uh, we know that uh, it's time to adapt on the new normal. And uh, like it was said here that things may never go back to the normal. You may need to create a new normal and that's okay and that will be okay. And I guess for us now here, uh, we are adapting. All of us, I think, is adapting. Uh, and with the coming of the vaccines, I guess, it will be much more easier for us again to, to work and move uh, in taking care of, of our patients. And I guess that would be all. And uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention.